There were three elements to today's announcement. Firstly, a $1.72 billion uh, contribution uh, to the governments of Alberta, Saskatchewan and BC, uh, as well as the Alberta Orphan Wells Association to clean up orphan and or inactive oil and gas wells, creating thousands of jobs uh, while also having lasting environmental benefits. Uh, this is a, a package that we have been working on with Ottawa, frankly, since last summer because we were still in challenged economic times uh, nine months ago, not as bad as now, but uh, we um, have underscored this is a really efficient way of getting good uh, blue collar, skilled labor back it, back it to work, folks who have been laid off uh, and, and who are maybe right now facing unemployment uh, in the oil field services sector. This is an important lifeline uh, for hundreds of companies, large and small. This is going to breathe new life into many uh, rural communities uh, where small service sector companies are a key part of the local and regional economy. Uh, and this is in addition to uh, the hundreds of millions of dollars that the government of Alberta has lent to the Alberta Orphan Well Association. So this will allow for a surge of well reclamation and completion work um, uh, all across the province, uh, we hope starting immediately. And I want to thank the Government of Canada for having heard our message about the importance of this uh, in the midst of the economic crisis especially. In addition, they announced uh, up to $750 million to create a new proposed emissions reduction fund to reduce emissions in the Canadian oil and gas sector with a focus on methane. Uh, this will provide uh, primarily repayable contributions to conventional and offshore oil and gas firms to support their investments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, Minister Nixon can provide further details, but he's been working very closely with his federal counterpart on a package of this nature, um, part of which we hope will be the finalization of an equivalency agreement with Ottawa on methane regulations. Pardon me. And then thirdly, they've announced ex the expansion of the new business credit availability program um, to help Canadian businesses get the financing they, they need, uh, the, expanding that to include specifically uh, small and mid-sized companies in the oil and gas sector um, with loans uh, of uh, varying between $15 million and $60 million a year offered at commercial rates repayable within four years and uh, the deployment strategy for uh, the Business Development Bank of Canada's COVID-19 oil and gas sector financing will be finalized shortly. So this is also an important measure to provide for liquidity uh, for uh, many uh, hundreds of small and medium-sized oil and gas companies, most of which, the vast majority of which are here in Alberta. Um, and uh, these three measures combined, I think, are are very good news uh, when we so desperately need it in this province's largest uh, industry, in fact, the country's largest subsector. And let me just remind, uh, first of all, I, once again, I want to thank the, the Prime Minister. I want to thank uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland for working cl cl so closely with me on these uh, initiatives, and uh, Finance Minister Bill Morneau, who's been in, in almost daily contact with Alberta Finance Minister Travis Tays on these and additional measures that we hope to see announced in the days to come. I also want to thank my fellow Premiers. We were on a call yesterday with uh, all uh, 13 Premiers, and once again, I've heard over and over a tremendous solidarity and understanding of the importance of the Canadian energy sector and support uh, for federal action to ensure a future for this vitally important part of the national economy. And I want to remind our fellow Canadians from coast to coast that when we were in the midst of the global financial crisis 12 years ago, that the national government stepped in to ensure a future for the central Canadian auto manufacturing sector. Uh, and uh, so th th that was the right thing to do. It helped to save that sector and with it hundreds of thousands of jobs. Um, but during that global financial crisis, one of the reasons Canada got through it stronger than virtually any other developed country was primarily because of the strength of the Alberta oil and gas sector. At that time, 
we drove national growth during the, the global financial crisis in 2008-9, uh, and that is one expression of how Alberta is, has always been there to help the rest of the country. This is a sector that uh, helps to sustain uh, approximately 800,000 jobs directly and indirectly that generates tens of billions of dollars of revenue, more than any other industry in the country, revenue that goes to support things like world-class health care, the system that we all count on right now. But I just need to close with this by saying uh, that more needs to be done. While this was a very important step forward today, and we are, uh, work, we'll work with the industry to make sure that this money is out there uh, creating jobs within days, uh, more must be done because uh, last uh, the uh, reduction in output by OPEC Plus that was announced uh, earlier this week of, I believe, nine and a half million barrels per day has not changed the uh, fundamental market conditions. In fact, um, I see that uh, WTI prices are down again to under $20 today, and Western Canadian Select closed at $4.62, down 38% today. So the OPEC plus production cuts have had no impact on global prices because of the surge of supply from OPEC plus in the last month in the face of a catastrophic reduction in demand. And so I want, want to once again reiterate the urgency of the national government stepping up to ensure uh, liquidity for this, the largest subsector of our economy, the largest export industry of Canada, um, a point that I made very strongly yesterday uh, on a call uh, with the Prime Minister at the First Minister's meeting. Um, so we'll continue to work for additional action, but we are grateful for uh, today's announcement.